An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. The genuine expression. The sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we will go through bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your common global style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. honesty. Which invites you. To be you to the fullest. Okay, so people have a job, they go off every single day and they go work, and the average salary in the city of Austin is, and Google told me this. $54,091 or $54, per family. Let's just write that on the board. Fifty-four, four, zero, nine, one. How many people think that that looks like a lot of money? Would you like to have $54,091? So that's how much on average you guys earn per year. Your, your families earn on average. If we were to take everybody here, and we were to take all of your parents' income and put it all in one big pile and then divide it out equally, Everybody would get $54,091 per family. Yes, sir? Um, is this like they earn in one year or like they this, this is what they earn in one year. So for every single year, they get one big paycheck. This is a lot of money. You buy like half a house. So do you guys think that this looks like a lot of money? No. No, not really, huh? I mean, to have your pocket. Yeah, I mean, if you want to be a millionaire, right? If you want to be a millionaire, if you want to have a million dollars, this isn't very much. It's, okay. it's great if it was in your pocket. Your pocket would bulge out like this. It would walk off money. And people go to really weird. They think you had a tumor. Yeah. So, so let's just say that we wanted to come up with a million dollars. Who here says agrees with me that if you have a million dollars, that's considered to be pretty wealthy. Who here thinks that if you had a million dollars, that's pretty darn good? Like, I think so. I think if you had a million dollars, you'd be pretty wealthy. So let's just find out how long it would take us if we were totally average, if we did what everybody else did. Let's just get, figure out how long it would take us to become a millionaire on $54,091 a year. About 20 years. How many years? 20. About 20 years. In fact, the answer is uh, if we didn't spend any of it. If you didn't spend any of it, if yeah. we lived in a magical dream world where there are no bills, it would take us 18 and a half years. Grabby is still working, guys. <laughs> 18 and a half years. Who here wants to wait 18 and a half years for their million dollars? My kids would already be grown up. Your kids would be grown up by then, right? You'd, you'd be a grandmother by the time that happens. But, uh, oh, wait. It would take more than that because you still have his bed. Yeah, we're getting to that point. Tax. $100,000. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, thanks so much for reminding me. I forgot about taxes, guys. The tax man, the tax man always gets his share, right? So whenever you earn money in the USA, the government takes a piece of it. It's because they provide things like roads. Just ask Obama, he'll tell you. <laughs> I did the research, and it appears that the taxes on $54,091 are $8,757.82. So let's just subtract that, because we don't even see that. So $8,757.82. And you know what? We'll drop the pennies because it doesn't matter. So, you don't think of any. Yeah. So who here can tell me what 54,091 minus 8,757 is? Who here can do some practice? I 
I've got a calculator, but I can do it in my head. So the answer, if you haven't gotten it already, is 45,000. 333.18. So you don't even see this. The government takes this. If you have a job, the government takes this much of your money. Without you don't even see it. So if you're earning this much, if you're earning the average amount per family, the government grabs this much of it. This is what you actually see. So how long would it take us to become a millionaire if we were just stuffing that money in our mattress all the time, but we only had this much to work with? 25 years? Yes, sir. 21 years? 21 years? Okay. What's your guess over there? What do you got? What do you have for me? How long do you think it would take? You don't know? The answer is 22 years. 22.05 years. So, 22 years. 22 years. How many of you want to wait 22 years? If you thought 18 and a half years was a long time, would you like to wait 22 years to be a millionaire? And your children would be having children. They'd be calling you grandma and grandpa by the time that happened. Yeah. So, there's more. I mean, how could I have been so silly, right? Turns out that most families got bills. It was already mentioned, bills. And you know what the average bills are for a family? Okay, how many of you guys live indoors? Show of hands. How many people live inside their house? Inside of our home? <laughs> I feel very sorry for somebody who doesn't have their hand raised right now. I will buy you a hotel room. How many people got here in a car? Did you get here in a car? I got here in a car. Yeah? How many of you, how many of you eat every day? Yeah. So, as it turns out, bills eat up a very large chunk of this money. That's food. Yeah, it's food, but you still can't save it, right? Yeah, that's that's the money to feed yourself. It's the money to clothe yourself. It's the money to put yourself in a house to give yourself a car. Do you know how much the bills are? I do, because Google told me. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Google. The answer is thirty-seven thousand. Who answered thirty-seven thousand? You are smart. Good job. Thirty-seven thousand. These are the average bills for a family in Austin, right here. The people in this room. This is what your finances look like. Thirty-seven thousand. Four hundred sixty-five dollars and twenty-one cents. Bills. Bills, bills, bills. Bills, bills, bills. Nobody likes bills. Nobody likes bills. Nobody Nobody likes bills. bills. No, no, bills. Are. So what is the difference? How much money do we have left? $8,000. So we have $7,000. 867 97 That's how much money we have. If you are out there working a normal job, this is how much money you end up with. $7,867 every year. That's less than $500 a month. And that doesn't include things like going to Schlitterbahn. That doesn't include things like going to the movies. That doesn't include fun stuff. That just includes living indoors, driving a car, having a house, having clothing, eating food every day. Can, can you guys imagine why when your parents say, I can't afford it, what they're, where they're coming from now? When you ask for something that's kind of expensive? So, and you want to buy an Xbox or something. Yeah, we're counting for gasoline in there too. It's such expensive. It's hard. It's expensive to live. So we have this seven thousand eight hundred sixty-seven dollars. How long? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half people in this place. Two point six kids. Yeah. It's pretty demographic to work, man. Two and a half point six kids. Forty-three years. Forty-three years, huh? Um, so who has guess how long would it take us if we just took this money and we stuck it in our mattress every single year? More all than this money, years? we never did anything fun. How long would it take us to become a millionaire? More than years? Years. No, 30, 40, 40, 33, 40. 40. 40. Okay, so you're 79. Okay, so are you ready for this? Okay, watch this guys. This is important. This is really important. So it would take you 127 years. I'll be dead. Yeah, I'm not going to live to 127. And if I do, people would be saying, he's one really old guy. His beard is like down to here. So can you see, guys, 
Can you see why most people don't become millionaires? Because they're on the 127 year plan. It's taking them 127 years to save that much money. Turns out a million dollars is a lot of money. And that doesn't account for spending it. That just means you have it. That doesn't mean that you have it to spend. That doesn't mean that you bought a Ferrari. That just means that you have a million dollars sitting in the bank. And that's what most people do. So I have good news. We're going to teach you a different plan. I'm going to teach you how to do something a little bit different today. See, we just talked about trading time for dollars. And that's what most people do. They, they work and they trade their hours for dollars. They go to work eight hours a day and they come back with a certain amount of money. But if they did that and they just stuck that money into a, into a mattress, and a lot of people do, it would take them 127 years to become a millionaire. And honestly, most people like to go to the movies, most people like to have nice things, most people like to eat out at restaurants, most people enjoy going to splitter bonds. And so this amount even becomes smaller. So we can see that unless we do something different than just stuffing our cash into a mattress and putting it in our piggy bank, we're not going to, we're not going to become a millionaire in our own lifetime. So. Business owners can earn a lot more than the average. And this is really important for you to understand. See, this is the average. This is what most people earn. People who run their own businesses and do so intelligently and work at them and learn about them, these people can earn a lot more than that. I know people who are earning over a million dollars a year. I know one person who earns over $50 million a year. That's a lot of money. If you're earning over $50 million a year, remember, your expenses don't change all that much. All of a sudden, this $37,000 doesn't look so big. That's why we're going to teach you how to run your own business. Because you can increase this number. You can increase this number and you can reduce everything else. Your taxes go down when you run your own business if you do it right. Your income goes up. That's why we're teaching you how to do it. So we're going to get started with this lesson. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is we have to understand that it costs you very money to start a business. In this class, we're going to run a business for you. We're going to give you a whole business plan, but it costs money to get started. So I'm going to need to go ahead, I'm going to need $50 from every single table. So, $50, please. $50. Who here, who has $50 in their pocket? Come on, who here, who here uh, under the age of 18 has 50 bucks in their pocket? Who here brought $50? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to do something different, right? All right. Listen up, guys. Can anybody tell me how you earn money if you don't have your own business yet? How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? From your grandma. What else you got? Investing. Okay, but if you don't have any money yet, how do you invest? Well, no, you don't invest. People invest. Oh, people invest for you, so it's a gift from others, right? Yeah. We got that garage sale. Garage sale, sell some stuff, right? We can get money a lot of ways. Okay. So, sir, what you got? A loan. Right in front of him. What you got? What do you have? Savings. So, so, like, this is all money that you got from somebody else. But unfortunately, these people aren't here right now, so you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to do something called work. Oh, no. Oh, right? So you know what we're going to do? So I have a business, and I'm going to employ everybody in this room, especially you, Robert. But what if I don't want to be employed? Especially you. Well, then you can't run a business. So you'll have to be employed. I'll it's part be of the class. Manager. Yeah. No, no, no. So in, in this class, everybody's the same. In my business. Okay, fine. Listen up. Thank you. What do you do? So what I do in my business is that I pay one dollar for jumping jacks. So we're going to do a bunch of jumping jacks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm actually gonna pay you. Real life. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay you with very real, like um, very real money that looks like this. Oh, Unfortunately, I'm not gonna let you guys start your business so until we do. So one jumping jack is one dollar. Each jumping jack is one dollar. How many people can tell me how many jumping jacks we need to do to to earn our fifty dollars? Fifty jumping jacks. All right, everybody, stand up. Stand up. I'm gonna lead you all in jumping jacks. It's gonna be a blast. 
make sure you have enough room around you to do some jumping jacks. So push your chairs out of the way. Find some space to do some jumping jacks. We're gonna do 50 jumping jacks, guys. 50. 50 is a lot of jumping jacks. We're gonna do them in sets of 10. And if you're doing them right now, you're just doing extra work. Because I haven't started yet. And unless you're doing them with me, you're not doing them at all. So we're gonna do 50 jumping jacks. Are you ready? 10 at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, rest for a minute, guys. Woo! 50 jumping jacks. Imagine that you're at work. And you, and you don't really want to be doing jumping jacks. Okay? You don't really want to be jumping jumping jacks, but you have to because your boss said so. I'm behind the podium, I'm your boss, I said so. You don't see any reason at all to be doing jumping jacks. You kind of think that I'm being silly asking you to do jumping jacks, but I'm like, no, do jumping jacks. That's what it's like to be at work. You've got a boss, and that boss tells you what you've got to do. What is this doing for the world? What is this doing for the world? That's a good question. Yeah, we're going to do more jumping jacks just because I said so. Ready? Let's do ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Job. And there's got to be a better way than this, guys. Why don't we start our own business instead of doing jumping jacks? Yeah. Yeah, like, is that a better idea? You know what? But I'm the boss. So I say, let's do 10 more. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh, yeah. You know what, guys? We're going to work hard. We're going to save our money. And we're going to figure out a way to grow that money while we're working for ourselves. We'll be our own boss instead of having to listen to this guy up here tell us to do jumping jacks, which is what I'm about to do. So we're going to do 10 more. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yeah. We'll do what we love instead of doing jumping jacks. We're almost there, guys. We've taken control of our finances. We've committed to learning how to run a business. And we're ready to go out on our own. Only one thing more to do. You know what it is? Ten more, Ten jumping, more jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, 50 jumping jacks. Everybody here has earned $50 to start their business. I'll give it over to you. Uh, I think this is, guys. Yeah, we've, so we've all got 50 bucks now. You know, everybody here has. So far, kids. Since this is uh, school, I give you guys all 50 virtual dollars for up on the board. So. Imagine going home. How many how many people are just a little bit tired from doing that? How many people are like a little bit sweaty and they're you know sweat pouring off of you? You've done the most extreme P one hundred X workout ever. Yeah. I mean that was just Mr. Jumping Jacks, guys. But imagine, okay, imagine feeling the way that you feel right now every single day, every single weekday for fifty two years. This one's like you have a job. Yeah, but yeah. imagine you were doing it for eight hours just those two minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah? Are you just like Iron Man? Iron Man. Alright, by the way, that's really easy money. Yeah, that's really easy money. If somebody would pay me a dollar to do a jumping jack, I'd do a jumping jack all the time. We do a million. I'd be a millionaire. Unfortunately, nobody's paying a dollar for jumping jacks except me, and I'm not paying their money, so. Oh, you do, right? All right. So we're ready to go into business, guys. We're ready to go into business. We've got the money. We've got the desire. We're ready. So who can tell me? Who can tell me why people go into business? Yes, Susan. My dad, he went into business because, um, he wanted to follow his passion, mm -hmm. and um, because you're the boss, and you get to make your own decisions. 
That's a really good reason to go into business. That's just what we have. Okay, what you even? To make a difference. To make a difference. Right, yeah. You can get your own boss. You don't have to listen to anyone else. You can be a lot more, a lot clearer. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, it's a good way to be successful. Okay, good. How about you, Madison? Um, to earn money for the family. To earn money for the family. These are all really good reasons. Really good reasons. So if people want to make money. They want to make a difference in the world. Has anybody here ever heard of Newman's Own? Newman's Own, they make salad dressing, they make all kinds of little food products. Do you know why that company was started? That company was started because the owner, Paul Newman, just wanted to make a difference in the world. All of their profit goes to charity. Paul Newman doesn't keep any of it. All of their profits go to charity. He started up that business just to make a difference in the world. That's all he did. How about, uh, I know he can't do it anymore. Well, I mean, but, but, oh, how, how did you do it? Because he was already wealthy. He was already wealthy. Yeah, he was. So, how about to have freedom, guys? So, a lot of you mentioned freedom. I work here with the Solomon Group. Do you want to know why? Sure. Because it gives me freedom. Because I don't have a boss. Because I get paid based on how hard I work. And if I do a really good job, I get paid more. And if I don't do such a good job, I get paid less. I get paid based on my own skills, my own merit. That's really important. Now what? So it's more realistic. So it's more realistic? <laughs> less like a communistic. <laughs> less communist, okay. <laughs> less communist. So yeah, it's more of a, of a meritocracy. You know what a meritocracy is? Meritocracy means that you, you rise as far up in the ladder as you are as the skills that you have. I'm getting ready to just talk to a bunch of little kids. Yeah, this ought to be really fun. Yep. <laughs> a fairly large audience. <clears throat> they're piling in. Yeah, they're piling in. <laughs> so like 10, 10 times 400, so you know, 4,000 years of experience in this one room. Woohoo! And I get to have an impact on their young lives. This will be fun. So three things that you're going to learn today about how to be successful in life. And the first one is set goals. What does that even mean? Do you know what setting goals means? Uh, it means setting a point for yourself what, that you want to achieve. Wow. That's awesome. 
That's a really good job. Can we give her a round of applause? Yeah. That's exactly right. A goal is just something that you say you're going to do by a certain time. I remember setting goals when I was a kid. They were always short-term goals. And as I got older, the goals got to be longer and longer and bigger and bigger. When I was really young, my mother did something very powerful with me. She had me fill out this form every single year before the beginning of the school year. It was called the All About Me. Have you guys ever done a fill in the blanks worksheet? Yeah, me too, lots of them. This fill in the blanks worksheet started like this. It said, my name is blank. I am blank years old. I'm in the blank grade. Blank is the president. These are pretty easy questions, so I like this worksheet. But then the questions got a little bit harder because it said, I'm going to do blank this week. And I had to think, what am I going to do this week? What can I accomplish this week that's going to be really fun? Maybe I'm going to learn how to ride a bike this week, or I'm going to write a 10-page research paper this week. Okay, that wasn't very fun. <laughs> it's still a goal. And then after that, it said, I'm going to do blank this month. And I had to really think, what project is so big that I can get it done in a month? Bigger projects, like I'm going to go to Gettysburg. I didn't even have a car. I had to convince my parents to take me. And then she said, the last one was, I'm going to do blank this year. These were huge, huge goals, because it takes a whole year to do them. And you have to learn how to plan, you have to learn how to prioritize. And these really, really big goals, I had to think about them. What am I going to do this year? What my mother was doing with me was she was teaching me how to look into the future, how to decide what it is that I really want so that I could go for it. And by being specific about what I wanted and being specific about when I was going to get it by, that was what setting a goal was all about. So let's flash forward. I'm older now. I'm not in elementary school anymore. And I was visiting my mom, and she pulled out all these pieces of paper. I had pulled out about 12 of them over the course of every school year, grade 1 through 12. And I was reading them. And I realized that over the course of my life, I had achieved every single one of those goals without even realizing it. One of my goals was to set up a financial education company to teach people about money. I'm doing it right now. That's a big goal. I didn't know how I was going to do it in 11th grade. And it just happened because I wrote it down. And because I wrote it down, it was on my mind. I think the most important part about writing about a goal is when you write it down. When you write down a goal, you give it power. I see a lot of you have clipboards and pencils. And I encourage you to think about what it is you want in life and write it down. The second thing that I want to talk to you about, about how you can be really successful in life, you've probably heard it before, seen it before, it's called believing in yourself. What does that actually mean? Have you ever had somebody tell you, you need to believe in yourself? And you think, what does that even mean? <laughs> you guys know what believing in yourself means? Let me get somebody in the front so that I don't have to walk all the way around. What does believing in yourself mean? It means that you believe something and you can actually achieve it. That's right. How many people believe the world is round? Yeah. That's good. If you don't have your hand up, that's okay. We'll get to you after class. <laughs> have you ever thought about why you believe that? Because someone taught us. Right, because somebody taught you. But not only did somebody taught you, then you kept thinking that thought over and over and over again. 
That's why you believe it. A belief is nothing more than a thought that you think over and over and over. So when you believe in yourself, you just have to think, I can do it over and over and over. And you have to think that you can do it even when people around you think you can't. How many people have ever had somebody discourage them and say, you can't do it, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. It has, hasn't it? It's happened to me too. And the thing that has really set me apart in life is that I believed in myself more than those other people didn't believe in me. Because at the end of the day, the person who has to believe in you is you. So every time somebody says you can't do it, you have to say, I can. You have to think it and you have to say it. I can and I will. Will you guys help me out saying that? I can and I will. That's right. One more time. I can and I will. Think about what you want in life. You can and you will. You guys are so fun. Thank you for having me here. So, hey, I'm not done yet. Yeah. So believe in yourself. I just taught you how to do it. Whenever anybody tells you you can't, you say, I can. And I will. Hmm. I always wanted to do that on stage. I always wanted to just kind of goof off. All the presenters, when I was in elementary school, they would stand there like this. It wasn't very fun. I just wanted to kind of dance. Not very well. <laughs> now I have to look at my notes. I totally forgot where I am. Set goals? Check. Believe in yourself? Check. Oh yeah! You gotta keep on trying. See, nobody starts by being the best. But people who keep trying end up being the best. How many of you know how to ride a bicycle? Yeah. How many of you know how to ride a unicycle? Yeah! I can ride one of them too. So riding a bicycle was hard. Okay, I remember starting, we didn't have training wheels when I was a kid, so I fell down a lot. And I remember the first time that I actually got on the bicycle and I made it move, I ended up right in a bush. I was riding along, riding along, riding along. Oh, here, here comes a bush. I don't know how to stop though. <laughs> Sideways into a bush. And it was a quicker bush. It hurt. But you know what? I just kept at it. And the second time I got on a bicycle and I made it move, I didn't end up in a quicker bush. I was able to make it stop and then get off without getting bruised, and it was sweet. It was the same thing when I was learning how to ride a unicycle. I would ride a unicycle, I would get about one foot, and then my face would hit the pavement and it would really hurt a lot. <laughs> but I kept trying that, because I knew, I saw that my friend could ride one. And I said, if you can do it, I can do it. If anybody else in this whole wide world has something that you want, that person is just showing you that it can be done. That person is just proving to you that it's possible. When you close your eyes and imagine yourself, and you think about what it is that you want out of life, you often see a picture of people that you respect and admire. How do you think sports stars got to be where they are in life? They started out by stinking, didn't they? And practice, and then they practice some more, and then they practice a little bit more. And eventually they got good at what they did, because they stuck with it, they kept at it. When my sister was five years old, she got herself a violin. And I used to call it the vile in, because the noises that came out of that thing were so horrendously hideous. It's like, I'm like, please stop. 
stop for me and my ears bleed. And after about a month, she didn't, she didn't stop. <laughs> she wouldn't stop just for me because she was my little sister. And, you know, little sisters don't stop for their big brother. That's right, she didn't stop. And after a month, I could kind of understand that there was like a song coming out of there. It wasn't a very good song. This Mary had a little lamb, the variation. Half the notes were wrong. And there's only four of them. Two of them were wrong. And after about six months, she could actually play pretty well. And she just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. And after about a year, she was playing with an orchestra, the youth orchestra of Cooks County. And after two years, she was the first violin. How many people know what the first violin is? Yeah. She was the first violin of, the, of an international youth orchestra. First chair. Because she just practiced every single day. And after, I mean, after about a year, it didn't sound so horrible. It started to sound beautiful. And she kept at it. My sister is 27 years old now. And when she picks up her violin, she brings a tear to my eye. It's so beautiful. But that didn't happen overnight. That happened over time. With persistence and dedication. It doesn't matter what you want to do in life. Maybe you want to play the violin. If you stick at it for 20 years, you'll bring a tear to my eye, I promise. It's so beautiful. I'll be 60 by then, so it'll be especially easy for you to bring a tear to my eye. So whatever it is that you want to do in life, wherever it is that you want to go, just know that you don't need to be talented, you don't need to be smart, you don't need to be educated. All you have to do is keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. And you will win. You will do it. You guys are in career day right now, which means you're thinking about the rest of your lives. You're thinking about all the opportunities that are open to you. Right now, you really only have one choice. You go to school where the truant officer meets you. I got I to laugh at the teachers on that one. The kids are like, what's a truant officer? <laughs> if you're fortunate, you will never meet the truant officer. Stay in school. But you don't have that much choice available to you right now. You get on the bus, you come to school, you go to your classes. If you're in fifth grade, you guys are headed to junior high soon. Yeah, new school. Now the fourth graders, give it two years, you'll be there. I promise. No, junior high school. Middle school. You'll be there soon, and you're going to have a little bit more choice. You're gonna, you're gonna go to your own classes. You guys came here in lines. As you get older, you have more and more responsibility placed on you. That's why I was so afraid, that's why I was so scared when I was sitting in your position. Because I knew that I could handle school. I knew I was good at it. I was a good student, my teachers liked me. Didn't have to see the principal too, too long. When I got into middle school, it became different. Because there's more responsibilities. And it's easy to become what I call paralyzed by choice. Because you have so many things that you can go do in life. Right now, there's one thing. You've got to be a good student. Be a good student. Make your teachers happy. Get good grades. Make your parents happy. Go to Schlerman. Yeah, that's how to your grades. But in life, you can go in any direction. You can be anything. Anything you want to be. And I know that a lot of you, when you close your eyes, you envision yourself in a very different place than you are right now. 
I'll tell you, when I graduated high school, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Didn't know. But I figured it out. And the reason that I figured it out was because I applied those three principles I told you about before. I set a goal. I believed that I could achieve it. My first goal when I graduated high school was to be an excellent employee for the company I worked for. You guys are doing career day. You all expect to have a job, right? Yeah. Be good at it. I made it a goal to be good at it. And because I made it a goal to be good at it, when I was 20 years old, they had me build a factory. That's a pretty high honor for a 20-year-old to be asked to build a factory. It was all because I set a goal to be excellent at what I did. That's it. I just said, I'm going to be excellent. And then every single day, I, I embodied that excellence. So set a goal, and a proper goal is written down, and it has a time constraint. So write it down and say, I will do this by this date. You'd be amazed at what happens. Second thing, again, I believed in myself. I said, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Even when people told me I couldn't, even when my boss told me I couldn't, even when my friend said, you're not gonna be able to build a factory. You're too young, you're too inexperienced. You can't do it. Well, I did. And the third thing is be persistent. Keep on trying. The first time I did something, I wasn't any good at it. And the second time I got better, and the third time I got better, and better, and better. And it's just like you guys with riding a bike, or a unicycle, or anything that you choose to do. When you came into kindergarten, you probably weren't all that good at school, just because you didn't know how to do it. Your teachers helped you, you helped each other, and you learned, and now you're in fourth and fifth grade. You are the oldest kids in this school. Yeah, the fifth grade is the oldest kids, huh? Yeah, you're almost the oldest. You're the year. But the younger kids look up to you. They look to you to see how, how to be good at student, how to be good at school, how to be a good student. And the only reason that you're good at it is because you just did it over and over and over again. And I'm sure that every single day you want to be coming to school, right? No, no not really, huh? <laughs> Was it sometimes hard to come to school? Yes. Yeah, because of tasks, right? Or because you didn't do your homework and the teacher doesn't believe your dog ate it for a third time. <laughs> it's tough. But you kept doing it, and you kept doing it, and now you're good at it. Yeah? So, you're good at it because you kept doing it. And it's the same thing with whatever you do in your career. I want to leave you with one final thought. The choices that you're making today they're not permanent. In my life, I built factories. I've been in finance. I lived in another country for five years. I've done a lot of stuff. I ran a tourism company. I ran a property management company. Now I work with a financial education company. What you're doing right now is just goal setting. You need to revisit your goals. Just because you set a goal, just because you decided you're gonna do something or be something, doesn't mean that that's it forever for the rest of your life, amen. You need to revisit your goals, reevaluate your goals. You need to think about it. Every six months, every year, just look at your life and say, is my life going the way I want it to? Are my goals still in line with my desires, with my dreams, or do I have new dreams, better dreams, more interesting dreams? This happens even as you're an adult. See, I work in the finance world right now, and one of the first things that I do with a new client is I say, hey, what are your goals? 
And quite often, if a person isn't where they want to be financially, it's simply because they don't have a goal. That's the number one reason that I've discovered that people are poor in this world is because they don't have a goal. They have nothing that they're working for. How many people here want to be rich? Yeah, I do too. Set a goal. And then revisit your goal. Every six months, look at your goal and say, am I on track to make that goal? And also say, is that goal even important to me anymore? The more you do that, the better off you're going to be in life. Thank you guys so much for having me here. I appreciate it. I'm grateful. You have allowed me to share this with you. Thank you.